my ex-boyfriend and I had a fight one time that ended up with me on the floor where he held me down and uh, whipped me all over. He didn't punch me. He just whipped me all over. And he, um, he made me say stuff. He said uh, that I'm unlovable and I'm worthless. I had to say Amber is unlovable. I had to say it really loud over and over. All kinds of things. I'm a liar, I'm lazy, I'm a pathetic wretch, I'm a worthless fat cunt. Really loud, louder cunt, say it louder. <clears throat> yeah, that fucked me up so bad. That went on for about 45 minutes. Uh, the whole time I was under the stupid mistaken impression that his brother was on his way over uh right before my then boyfriend got up i i found out that you know his brother wasn't on the way his brother had called him and said you know what's going on because i had texted his brother and my boyfriend also has a toxic family um hmm a couple of years later, his brother would end up on that same spot on the floor holding my ex-boyfriend down while we waited for cops to show up. It was a welfare check gone wrong situation. And that motherfucker uh, was just absolutely indignant because my ex had accosted him. He had tried to fight him. He wanted to press charges, but that address was still on my ex's driver's license. So the cops were like, yeah, you can't. Uh, it's his house. <laughs> Um, and that motherfucker was like, well, well, what if it had been, I mean, I was able to hold him down with my help at the very end, mind you. My ex-boyfriend shriveled up, but he was a strong little motherfucker. And that, that time later on when his brother had to hold him down and I had to help him because his brother was getting tired holding him down. And he was indignant. And what if it had been his sister or his mother? Or what if it had just been me? And I goddamn fucking snorted when he said that. Because I thought back to that previous time where I was on that same exact spot on the floor. Saying that I'm a worthless, unlovable, stupid cunt, all kinds of shit. It fucked me up, like I said. Uh, I couldn't breathe very well. It was just a terrifying experience that had reached a whole new level of brutal and degrading. And when it was, when, when he finally let me up, I called my grandmother. And that's when she told me to lose weight and cook more and I need to make him happy. If I make him happy, he won't hurt me. So there are many reasons why I stayed with my abusive ex-boyfriend. First of all, I maintain my number one reason I loved him and I had every confidence that that was not, I believe that motherfucker lost his mind. He wasn't a piece of shit. I fell in love with the awesome dude, right? <sighs> right? So I loved him. But uh, what, what was I supposed to do? That house was in my name. I could not afford to live there. I couldn't sustain it on my own and I couldn't go out and get an apartment, my ex could have left. He could afford it. He didn't. What was I supposed to do, right? After my family told me, I was waiting to cook more. <laughs> yeah, I just, I couldn't let that one go. I, I that was uh, the beginning of something very, <clears throat> After that fight, if you can call it that, which, you know, I had mouthed off. <laughs> Shame on me, not knowing my place. I had mouthed off and I had ended up with a cigarette put out in my teeth because I smoked in the house. It was just, mm. and then escalated to me being on the ground, struggling to breathe and reciting vile, filthy, awful things about myself, right? 
and my ex was not sorry for a very long time. Two days later, his dad and his brother were there, uh, supposed to help him pack, because I didn't give a fuck what my grandmother said. That motherfucker, he was leaving. He had to go. So his brother and his dad came over to help him pack, supposedly, but they left with the TV and that's it. They didn't help him pack. They got a TV out of the deal. And uh, while they were there, I walked by and I said hi to them. And my ex screamed, cunt. He was still mad. He was furious. He called my grandmother and uh, told her every bad thing that he knew I did. And then he made up some shit like she had been missing a Rolex and he told her I stole it. You know, she would find that fucking Rolex after believing him, after believing my ex-boyfriend. She finds this Rolex. She never did tell me. I just saw her wearing it one day when I was living with her. You know? Oh, so you, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it was in the closet. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> my ex, like I said, he wasn't mad or he wasn't uh, sorry for a very long time after that experience. Um, but he also didn't leave because he knew that, he knew he didn't really have to. It was weird. It was a tense time. We effectively just drove each other crazy because, uh, it's maddening. It's maddening to be in that situation. I don't know his goddamn motivation, right? I know that he wasn't right. And, uh. I now know that his family thought that I was just an attention whore and I liked to be rescued. Okay, right on guys. My family obviously, you know, like if I ever wanted to punish my ex, if I wanted to like fuck him over, he would have been in jail or I would have told my dad who's a certified badass and my dad would have smoked his ass, right? I feel like it's pretty evident that I never wanted to punish him or hurt him. I wanted him to get better. If he wasn't going to get better, I did want him to get the fuck out of my life, but I couldn't make him, you know? I couldn't let it go, though. And I was surly. I felt really fucking trapped. It was a hopeless fucking time. It was isolating, right? Um, you know, it got to a point where my ex-boyfriend one day sent me a bunch of emails begging me to kill myself. He said, if I ever loved anyone, just do the world a favor. And he swore he would take care of the cats. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It there have been several times in my life, it seemed as if there's not a better choice for me, right? I'm not a strong person at all. Um, any strength that I do have, it's like forced situationally. <laughs> like uh, right now, I, I, I don't have anybody that I, that I can lean on, so right but just like i dealt with my flooded house everything now that i'm dealing with it's at a snail's pace it's very slow and it's a lot of crying and a lot of depression and a lot of fucking hopelessness right for a brief time you know my, my dad after just fast forward I'm getting kicked out of my grandmother's house and I'm here and uh, 
I don't have a car and I'm having to rely on my mom and my mom's a drug addict. My dad several times was gonna come pick me up and rescue me, <laughs> uh, several times. Those times would come and go and he wouldn't even call and tell me why he didn't show up. Just, you know, I would send a snarky text like, thanks dad, thanks for being my hero, <laughs> like fuck. And that's the thing about my family, like, yeah, it upset me that my dad was going to come rescue me and he didn't show up and he didn't even have the courtesy to call and tell me he wasn't coming. That shit is upsetting. Just because I'm desperate doesn't mean that I don't still get angry. I don't understand at all why that's hard for people to comprehend. I really don't. But yeah, so my dad would never show up. Four or five times he was going to come rescue me. Four different, four or five different dates, right? And they just would pass by. 